Okay, hi, so welcome to this video on microscopy. And that is, of course, the study of things using microscopes. And so why do we use microscopes? We use microscopes because some things, especially in biology, are way too small for us to see with our eyes. So we're talking about things like cells here, and you zoom in to the, uh, the organelles inside the cells. Those things are absolutely tiny and impossible for us to see with our eyes. So we need something to help us. And that something is a microscope. Right, now there are different types of microscopes, as you can see here. On the left hand side, we have a light microscope, and on the right hand side, which looks more complicated, and indeed it is, we have an electron microscope. So in this video, we're going to discuss uh, briefly the differences between those two, and we're going to do some calculations, uh, which you need to be able to do for your exam. Uh, when we're talking about an image size versus the real size of something we're looking at. Okay, so let's crack on. So first of all, on the left here, we have our light microscope. So let's just drag this down like so. And this is our light microscope. Okie doke. And so what you need to know about the light microscope is that we use light uh, alongside lenses and we can focus the light to be able to view an image. Okay, so we use light and lenses. Okay, in order to focus on an image. Now that is a simplified uh, description of what's going on here. There are more complex workings inside the microscope, but you don't need to know exactly how all of those things work. Okay, what is important is that these allow us, oh, that was a spelling error, allow us, or allows us, the microscope allows us to view cells. Okay, so individual cells that is, and even larger components of the cell. Okay, and an example of a larger component of the cell is the nuclei, right? Or the nucleus or plural nuclei, right? So we can see the nuclei uh, of a cell, the nucleus of a cell or the nuclei plural in um, not too much detail. You can't look inside the nucleus if you like, but you can actually distinguish the nucleus, right? So when you're looking at a, a or an image of a cell, you can see the nucleus, you can see other things, but only, uh, you know, in not too much detail. So the resolution is relatively low. Okay, magnification is relatively low. Okay, so what are those two things? Well, magnification basically means how far can you zoom in, okay? That's literally what it means. So if you can magnify, say, times 10, that means what you're seeing is 10 times um, bigger than what it is in real life, okay? If you can magnify times 1,000, then you're zooming in 1,000 times. What you're seeing is 1,000 times bigger than it actually is in real life, okay? So that's literally what magnification is. Now, resolution, resolution is the ability to distinguish between two points, Right, so if you've ever seen a blurry photo and you zoom in, you still can't see any more detail. You might get closer and closer and you, you just see a big blur of pixels, but you actually can't see any more detail, right? And that's because the resolution is gonna be low there. And so the resolution means the ability to distinguish between two points. If you have a higher resolution, then you are able to distinguish between two points that are closer together than if you had a lower resolution, okay? And so that's where the image looks sharper. And so with a light microscope, those two things are relatively low, okay, in comparison, of course, to what we're gonna look at next, and that is the electron microscope. But they're still far, far better than our eyes are able to do. Okay, and as an example, let's have a look at an image uh, which we could get from a light microscope. Let's see if we can enlarge this here we go so this here is a bunch of cells from a plant right i'm not sure exactly what cells they are it looks like potentially from a leaf or from a stem of a plant now you'll notice they're green when you look under a light microscope normally they're not colored right you won't see colored cells the reason for the coloring is usually as a result of staining and staining is something that we're going to look at uh, a little bit later on in the video uh, when we look at cells under a light microscope we must stain the cells so that we can actually see certain parts of the cell now notice that certain parts of the cell we can't see right we can't see things like ribosomes at the moment we can't really distinguish the cell wall from the cell membrane only if you looked really carefully you may be able to but not very well right so that's because the magnification 
So how much we've zoomed is not high enough to do that. And the resolution, so the ability for us to view the, dis, uh, sorry, distinguish two points is not high enough, right? They're not high enough with a light microscope. And so for that kind of thing, we'd have to use the electron microscope. All right, so that's what we're gonna have a look at next. And that is, of course, the electron microscope. There we go. Now, there are actually different types of electron microscopes, which I'm not going to go through in this video. An electron microscope is a very, very complex and expensive piece of equipment. But what it basically does is it fires electrons at a sample, okay? Rather than shining light on the sample, it fires electrons at a sample to form an image, right? So you're actually firing electrons, that's why it's called an electron microscope, there's no surprise there. Now the magnification and resolution are far higher than is possible with a light microscope. Microscope. Okay, so they have a far higher magnification and a far higher resolution. This means with an electron microscope, you can zoom in way, way further and have a look at things in more detail. And because you can actually distinguish between two points, okay, so the resolution is far higher, that means you can actually see fine structures um, and you get a sharp image, right? So that's why electron microscopes are really useful. The downside and the reason why you won't have, or most of you won't have them at your school is because they're extremely expensive. Uh, however, they are very useful. Okay, so let's have a look at an example image from an electron microscope. All right, here we go. So this is actually a mitochondria, right? So you can, you can already tell that we've zoomed in way further than we could have done with a light microscope because you can see the internal structures of the mitochondria. Now, the mitochondria is way smaller than the nucleus. The mitochondria is obviously found inside the cell. Now, the fact that we can see the inside of this mitochondria rather than just see it as a blob in the cell means that we have zoomed in way further than we could have done with a light microscope. You'll also notice that this image is black and white, right? Because we're not using light, we're not detecting color. And you will see some images from an electron microscope which are colored, and that's because the color has been added afterwards by computers. You actually can't see color because electrons are not light, right? So it will be a black and white image that you get, um, obviously with gray, depending on how intense the black is uh, at the end and you can add color afterwards. And so that's a very clever thing that we can do, but you don't get color straight away from the image. Okie doke. So let's have a look now at some kind of questions that you may be asked in an exam. You may be asked to do some calculations um, in terms of magnification, right? So you may have an image or you may have an image described to you. You may be asked to work out the size of an image based on something called magnification. Okay, so there is a formula that you need to know, right? You just need to remember this, and that is that magnification, okay, magnification, we've already discussed what that is. That's basically how far you've zoomed in, okay? What that is equal to is the image size, that is the size of the image that you're looking at, okay, divided by the real size, and that is the real life size of what you're looking at. Okay, now let me give you an example. Let's say, um, let's go back up and have a look at our cells, right? Let's say, for example, and this is a very simplified um, example. Let's say this here, okay, the diameter of this cell, right, on our piece of paper, as we're looking at it, is five centimeters, okay, five centimeters. And let's say that the size or of the diameter uh, in real life is is let's say 0.5 millimeters okay now notice the units here are different we've got millimeters and centimeters okay in our calculations they cannot be different they must always be the same so let's go down here and use this so magnification okay i'm just going to write m is equal to our image size, remember what I said the image size was? Image size was five centimeters. Okay, and that must be divided by the real size of the image. Uh, or sorry, the real size of that uh, that cell. And now that cell was 0.5, and I'm writing it over here for a reason, 
millimeters in diameter. Okay, but we need this unit to be the same as this unit. If I wanted to, I could have converted uh, centimeters to millimeters and, and work with it like that. It doesn't matter. Okay, as long as the units agree. And now a millimeter is 10 times smaller than a centimeter, right? There are 10 millimeters per centimeter. So how many centimeters is this? Well, we must divide it by 10. So that is 0 0.05 centimeters. Okay, so 0 0.05 centimeters is the same as 0 0.5 millimeters. And so what I need to do is I need to actually write this in centimeters. And so that is 0 0.05 centimeters. Now you notice the units, that's a terrible M there. There we go. That's just as bad. There we go. Now you know that the units agree. And so we just carry out this calculation. We do 5 divided by 0 0.05. And that will give us an answer of 100 if you put that into your calculator or you do it in your head, right? That will give us 100. And that means our magnification is times 100. Okay. And that would be our answer. Our magnification in that case is times 100. That means with our microscope, we have zoomed in 100 times to have a look at that cell. All right. Now we won't always ask to, uh, sorry, we won't always be asked to work out the magnification. Sometimes we're given the magnification and we're given something else and we're asked to work out the other variable, right? So let's have a look at an example question now and try and have a go on your own. All right, let's have a look. So it says a plant cell was viewed with a magnification of times 200, right? The image of the cell was 1.2 centimeters wide. That means 1.2 centimeters in diameter. What was the real size of the cell in millimeters, right? Be very careful about that because we have conflicting units here, right? In millimeters. So pause the video now and try and have a go and then restart the video because I'm going to go through the solution. All right, so I hope you did have a go at that. So we have our equation, and that is that the magnification, just going to write M, is equal to the image size, okay, so the image size divided by the real size, right, the real size. Now, what we're trying to work out is this on the bottom, the real size, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to chuck in the numbers, but before I do that, I'm going to make sure that both of them... Um, sorry, the numbers are in the units that I want, right? It's asking me to work it out in millimeters. However, the image size that they've given me is in centimeters. So what I'm going to say is that 1.2 centimeters, well, that is equal to how many millimeters? Well, there are 10 millimeters in every centimeter. And so that means we need to times that by 10. And so we get an answer of 12 centimeters. centimeters, sorry, that's me being stupid, 12 millimeters, right? 12 millimeters is the same as 1.2 centimeters. The reason I've done that is because I want my answer in millimeters. Okay, so now I'm going to put this number into my equation. And I'm also going to put the magnification in because I already know it. And so the magnification is 200. So I have 200 is equal to the image size of 12 millimeters, right? Divided by the real size, I'm just going to call it R, which we don't know. So now all I need to do is rearrange this equation in order to find R, okay? Now, whenever you have something like this, you can just flip the bottom of the fraction, okay? But I always like to go through it step by step because it means you'll never get it wrong. So if we have uh, R on the bottom of our fraction there, because that's being divided, all we need to do is times both sides by R, okay? So if I times this side by R, times by R, okay, and I times this side by R, I get 200 on the right on the left hand side sorry times by our real size r is equal to 12 okay 12 millimeters now if i want to leave r on its own well that's being times by 200 i just divide by 200 okay and that, in that case i do the same over here right divide both sides of the equation by 200 and therefore you have r on its own is equal to 12 divided by 200 Okay, and if you put that in your calculator, right, you'll get an answer of 0 0.06. Okay, so, and 0 0.06, bear in mind we used millimeters. The answer is therefore in millimeters. And so that is our answer. I hope you got that right. And if you didn't, I hope now you can see how you tackle that kind of question.
Okay, so I'm going to stop there. I hope that's helped. Uh, I'm going to carry on with microscopy in my next video where we're going to have a look at um, more calculations involving standard form, but we're also going to have a look at the inner workings of not in the inner working, sorry. Um, we're going to have a look at how to use a light microscope. I said at the start of the video, you don't need to know exactly how it works on the inside, which you don't, but you do need to know how to use one, right? So that is something else that we're going to have a look at in the next video. But for now, uh, if you did find this useful, please do like and subscribe because it really does help me out. If you do have any questions still, then feel free to post them in the box below and I'll be sure to get back to you. But I look forward to seeing you in the next video.